Mike Pence absolutely KOs Kamala Harris in the debate. I don't think that the vice presidential debate at any time has swayed more than one voter in the entire nation. This year, however, it might be different. Given the advanced ages of those at the top of the ticket with Joe Biden being 78 on Inauguration Day and Donald Trump being 74 and going through Corona, the question as to who would take over comes much more to the forefront. We had tonight Kamala, Kamala Harris debating Mike Pence. It was, let me give the disclosure away, a blowout. Mike Pence absolutely destroyed her, and Kamala, to me, proved that she was perhaps the most unlikable politician in the history of the United States. She is fake. She's a phony. She is trying to come off as sincere and comes off as just the opposite. I grant you, I went into the debate not expecting much from her. Maybe she could have overcome those low expectations. She underwhelmed completely. And I'm going to be concentrating on Kamala because I honestly can tell you that I think that Pence did a pretty phenomenal job and looked very presidential, and I would have no objections in having him in the Oval Office. First off, Kamala starts off by going off on the attack. She was almost like pulling the Band-Aid, a scab off of a wound of a nation. She wants to create pain for the nation and gets you to associate that with Donald Trump. So I want to ask the American people, how calm were you when you were panicked about where you're going to get your next roll of toilet paper? How calm were you when your kids were sent home from school and you didn't know when they could go back? How calm Thank were you, you Thank when you, your Senator children Harris. couldn't see your parents because you were afraid they could kill them? This is a tried and true debate tactic when you are not necessarily competing logically against the person that you were debating, but rather playing to the audience. And that was her goal from the outset. She want, says that she wants to help people, that her and Biden want to help the people. There is nothing helpful about getting people to feel pain over and over again, to try to install the idea that they are victims in their mind on a permanent basis. This is what the Democratic Party, this is part of their strategy, and Kamala definitely exemplified it here. Then there came to be the question as to what would happen and have the vice presidential candidates spoken with those at the top of the ticket regarding the health and who, how they would take over. All that Kamala did was give a litany, a Basically, she read off her resume as to why she would be fit to be president. If you don't think that Joe Biden is a Trojan horse to get this unlikable woman into the Oval Office, then I don't know what to say. Then when the question about taxes comes up, she gives a pre-programmed response saying that she will not raise taxes on anybody who makes more than $400,000 a year. Mike Pence interjects, and he rightly questions as to whether or not her and Biden would repeal the Trump tax cuts, which absolutely do give a tax break to the middle class. And the truth and the fact is, Joe Biden has been very clear. He will not raise taxes on anybody who makes less than $400,000 he a year. He said he's repeal the Trump tax cuts. Uh, Mr. Vice President, I'm speaking. Well, wait, wait. I'm speaking. It'd be important if you said the truth. Right. Joe Biden has said <laughs> twice in the debate last week that he's going to repeal the Trump tax cuts. That was tax cuts that gave the average working family $2,000 in a tax break every single year. That is, Senator, that is that's absolutely the math. not true. That is he only bill, cutting, is he only going to repeal part of the Trump tax cuts? If you don't mind letting me finish, we can Please. then have a conversation, okay? Please. Okay. Joe Biden will not raise taxes on anyone who makes less than $400,000 a year. He has been very clear about that. Joe Biden has previously stated the Trump tax cuts would be obliterated. She smiles falsely at him and asked when she, when she was pressed, she goes along with her same original dialogue, completely glossing over what Mike Pence had stated, what he had questioned. She refused to answer the question. She refuses to acknowledge the fact that the Trump tax cuts do in fact give a tax break to the middle class. So her statement was false. It was a lie completely. Then with the question regarding the economy, the Democrats tried to shift the blame, as they would, naturally to Donald Trump. 
if there is one thing that they should avoid is questions about the economy. The reason that the economy is suffering currently, and it wasn't for the first three and a half years, in fact, it was on fire, is because of COVID and the democratic lockdowns by the blue state governors depriving people of their right to work, their access to the workplace, access to their children's education that are forced to stay home. And the continued economic deluge of companies going out of business can be laid to blame solely on the Democrats. Right now in New York, with the recent spike in COVID cases, they are shutting things down in New York City. These places are likely never going to reopen again. In addition, part of the reason that the economy is struggling is because businesses have been looted and burnt to the ground as a result of the riots, which the Democrats practically applauded. More on that in a second. But you see all the drug overdoses that are happening at home that might have not happened because people are at home and they're miserable and they want to take the edge off, the increase in alcoholism. This is to blame as a result of shutting down the economy. When questioned about foreign policy, Kamala refers to Joe Biden telling her that it's all about relationships then if that's the case, why would we want to elect a total phony like you that couldn't, that was one of the first candidates knocked out of the Democratic primaries? You were polling at like 3% of the Democratic vote and you were gone. Why would we want you, this phony, this false five foot one, rather unattractive woman to be the face of our nation and to develop relationships with other heads of state? No, thank you. I don't respect you. I don't think other heads of state are going to respect you. If it is indeed what Joe Biden said, it's about relationships. I want you nowhere near the negotiating table. All right, I mentioned how disingenuous she was. There are going to be a couple of examples coming up. The first one, she continues to propagate lies that Donald Trump called American soldiers suckers and losers. This, not even John Bolton, who was there at the time in France, he emphatically stated that Donald Trump, he did not believe, said this. Yet she repeats it because she wants votes. Everything for her is about political expediency and her own personal power. And this is another one of those examples. As per the Supreme Court, we all saw her as she tried to destroy Justice Kavanaugh in her line of questioning. And yet when Mike Pence brings up the fact that Democratic senators, including Kamala Harris, have questioned ju judicial nominees based on their religion. She said that such claims, it is insulting to suggest they would knock anyone for their faith. Okay, that's like saying someone caught in a bank vault with the break-in tools would say, hey, I'm an honest person. It's insulting that you would accuse me of burglary. You're insulted, Kamala? Kamala? She's a political animal. She will say whatever is needed to get elected. Now, continuing on with the Supreme Court, she positively, absolutely refused, despite Mike Pence pressing her on multiple occasions to acknowledge whether or not they plan on packing on more justices to the Supreme Court. Instead, she goes to, to a little history lesson about honest Abe when she's the most disingenuous person of the four candidates. She wants to conflate herself with Abe Lincoln and get that association with that fake smile and veneers showing. Ugh. Pack the Supreme Court to get your way. I'm so glad we went through a little history lesson. Let's do that a little more. In 1864. Well, I'd like you to answer the question. No, Mr. Yes. Vice President, I'm Please. speaking. I'm speaking. Okay. In 1864. One of the, I think, political heroes, certainly of the president, I, I assume of you also, Mr. Vice President, is Abraham Lincoln. Mm -hmm. Abraham Lincoln was up for re-election. And it was 27 days before the election. And a seat became open on the United States Supreme Court. Abraham Lincoln's party was in charge, not only of the White House, but the Senate. But Honest Abe said, and yeah, Mike Pence absolutely pressed her several times as to whether or not she would pack the Supreme Court, and she declined to answer. 
She's disingenuous. Of course, they are all in all likelihood going to try to pack the Supreme Court because this political animal wants power. And that's the way to hold on to power is to disrupt something that's existed and worked for 150 years. They want to tilt the political machine in their favor. That's exactly what they want to do. And then they want to come after the Second Amendment rights of the individual. And they want to start chipping away at the First Amendment in terms of defining hate crimes. And guess what? I acknowledge the fact that hate crimes do exist out there. That hate speech, excuse me, hate speech does exist out there. The challenge that I have is who is going to decide what is in fact hate speech. This is why we have the First Amendment to protect even the most vulgar things that we disagree with. Even Noam Chomsky, known leftist states as such. If you can't protect the speech of the people that you most dislike, and that includes Kamala Harris for me, then you don't have true free speech. That is its purpose. That is Kamala Harris, however, said that she was part of the peaceful protests. And she mentioned George Floyd and the atrocity that existed there. And I have to ask, what peaceful protest are you talking about? Do you mean the total destruction of Minneapolis, city blocks, businesses burned, police stations looted and burned, massive looting, massive unrest. Are those the peaceful protests that you're speaking of? Are you talking about the Minnesota Freedom Fund that raised money that you promoted and asked people to contribute to, Kamala, that went to bail out rioters from prison so they could get back out onto the streets as quickly as possible and continue their efforts? Is this what you speak of when you mention the peaceful protests that you're associated with? The fine people hoax. Everything that Joe Biden has stated is that his whole campaign, the whole reason for him entering the race is based on a lie. Yet she goes ahead and repeats it. And on the other side, there were neo-Nazis carrying tiki torches, shouting racial epithets, anti-Semitic slurs. And Donald Trump, when asked about it, said there were fine people on both sides. This is who we have as the president Susan, of the United Susan. States. And America, Susan. you deserve better. The fine people hoax has been debunked at infinitum. Donald Trump clearly stated that he excludes the neo-Nazis and the KKK as they should be condemned totally from the group that he would describe as fine people. And you had people, and I'm not talking about the neo-Nazis and the white nationalists, because they should be condemned totally. But you had many people in that group other than neo-Nazis and white nationalists, okay? Yet they continue to conflate this. They continue, as Mike Pence said, to edit that part out, selectively edit. The context changes completely. And she knows it's a lie, and yet she continues to try to manipulate the American public, the American voter, with it. And to me, this is a sickening thing because it is widening the racial divide in our society. And it makes me tremendously, tremendously sad. When people believe this, when people believe that our president, who has repeatedly... Because they should be condemned totally. Condemned white supremacy, is deemed to be in favor of it. And as someone who thinks that they are fine people, when that is positively false. You respect the American people when you tell them the truth. Yet she is aided by the media who refuse to call the Democrats out on it. She's, she's able to get away with it. But it does demonstrate her total lack of character, especially when compared to Mike Pence. Total disingenuous biatch. Accepting the results of the election, the moderator asked whether or not Donald Trump would, framing the question in such a negative light. Mike Pence did a wonderful job answering this question. He returned it to the Democrats and basically stated what we all know. For the last three and a half years, they have been trying to overturn the results 2016. The man who should have never been elected into office, they have been fighting every step of the way. They had an impeachment, as Mike Pence said, based on a phone call, based on the fact that Joe Biden is on record saying, if you don't do what I want, I'm not going to give you a billion dollars. Yet you hold Donald Trump to a totally different standard. This, once again, is the fault of the lying media. I think a fair question for the Democrats would be, if Donald Trump wins, Will Joe Biden, despite Hillary Clinton's admonition not to accept the results of the election under any circumstances, under any circumstances, she literally said that. You know, Joe Biden should not concede under any circumstances because I think this is going to drag out 
And eventually, I do believe he will win if we don't give an inch. But the media will never ask the Democrats these questions because they are in the bag for them. They're carrying them around. It's sickening. It is the DNC. It is the powerful elite that are aligning themselves in order to remove an outsider from office. That is sadly the way I see it. And here's the bottom line. Mike Pence absolutely walloped Kamala Harris during this debate. I'll be extremely generous and give Kamala Harris a D plus. Her outright lying, her inability to answer a direct question about the Supreme Court, her lying about the fine people hoax really irked me. And the fact is that it just drives our nation into a deeper divide. And it really, really saddens me. And it makes me sick. And this is why I don't understand how anybody could vote for this little snake, this five foot one unattractive snake. And again, I really find Kamala to be absolutely disingenuous. Her fake smiles. <laughs> I'm speaking. The important is you said the truth. I mean, her attempt to conflate honest Abe with herself is so laughable. And it flies right in the face of all those fake, horrific smiles. She was really, really awful. Mike Pence, I would love to have as president of the United States. And if Kamala Harris is in the Oval Office, God help our country. And you know that Joe Biden is not going to last four years. So don't let that happen. Vote for the better alternative. Donald Trump is not perfect, but his policies are pretty darn good. So my urge you guys to vote for Donald Trump. Peace out.